So I read、uh, Jojo Orr's Animal Farm at last. <laughs> of course, I know it's a masterpiece. I know it's a classic. I've known it ever since my childhood, but <laughs> for some reason or another, I haven't read this wonderful masterpiece until、uh, yesterday. And actually, I didn't read it. You know, <laughs> I'm pretty busy and I have lots of things to do. So I didn't have time to read it. I listened to it while I you know, was walking. In, in Tokyo, you know, from a place to place, you know, doing my work. <laughs> and I listened to the whole animal farm thing.、Uh, the, I, I think the length was something like three hours, so it's not so bad. And so I finally listened to it. I really loved it.、Uh, the reason why I listened to、uh, the, the animal farm at l a s t was because I, I, you know, I've been listening to the School of Life podcast. Uh, actually, a YouTube channel, and it's a brilliant、uh, channel. I r- really think it's wonderful. And you know, one of them was on George Orwell, when、um, the narrator、uh, discussed George Orwell's life, and he mentioned how it was you know, just a few years in his later years in which、uh, George Orwell wrote、uh, animal, The Animal Farm and 1984. And these f- a few years d e f i n e s the image. That we have of George Orwell, but George Orwell, m e a n w h i l e did other things. So, you know, so that、uh, narrative、uh, really kicked my, kept up my interest. And, you know, I read or rather listened to the Animal Firm at r e s t It's a perfectly、uh, constructed f- fable, isn't it? I mean, so, you know, the animals,、uh, you know, which, uh, who, uh, uh, you know, Rebel、uh, against this、uh, human,、uh, Mr. Jones.、Uh, these animals, of course,、uh, are metaphors for, for humans, right? And the fact that the, the animals are used as metaphors for humans is really brilliant because, you know, we are animals. And within us, although we have intelligence, we have, you know, society,、uh, we have actually animal instincts as well. So, you know, it's quite wonderful that, that、uh, when we read at, about pigs and horses and dogs and sheep and, and you know, ducks and chickens, and, you know, then、uh, when we read about these animals,、uh, the animal instincts that are within us,、uh, within humans,、uh, come out、uh, in, a, in a really beautiful and un- unrestrained way. And that's the beauty of, one beauty of the animal farm. The other beauty is that, you know, look to f- seen from the position of a human being, the animals seem to be quite different. You know, or they seem to belong to a different category. So that would justify discrimination, prejudices, and so on. But, you know, after all, these, in the wonderful world of the animal farm, these are actually. Metaphors for humans、uh, because they speak and they learn to read and they sing songs and they make propaganda and you know they actually、uh, associate and negotiate with humans. So these animals are actually not real animals, these are humans in disguise. But you know, in society, in real society that we inhabit, we do have discrimination, we do have. These prejudices, and we sometimes、uh, tend to regard other humans as if they are belonging to a different category. And that、uh, cognitive bias is beautifully captured in、uh, the makeup of this、uh, classic.、Um, the pigs,、uh, the you know, ruling class animals, they gradually tend,、uh, begin to think that they are you know,、uh, privileged. Uh, special entities uh, which uh, should be treated uh, uh, in a special way, as separate from other animals. And finally, you know, there's this really funny slogan、uh, for four legs bad, two legs good,、uh, you know, denouncing the humans and, you know, in praise of the animals. But, you know, later、uh, in the novel,、uh, the pigs actually、uh, start to walk on two legs. And having seen that, some animals may complain because you know, they knew the slogan. But the sheep、uh, who have been always you know, r- you know, saying this 
slogan allowed, uh, they say, instead of four legs good, two legs bad, they say, four legs good, two legs better. <laughs> so <laughs> this kind of humor um, is a really wonderful, uh, wonderful part of the charm of this uh, novel. So I, I, in all, I, I think it's a beautifully constructed uh, fable. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, this kind of setup makes us disarmed because when we read this as something related to humans, we have our own opinion. And, you know, we tend to be self-defensive when somebody mentions anything about class or prejudices and social injustice and so on. But when you read this as a uh, a story about animals, then we are off guard and we just read it as a naive reader. But then, uh, at the end, it becomes clear that this has been all about human society. And so, you know, that way we are penetrated into the heart of our cognitive system, off guard, because we read it as a fable, but Actually, it is a really, really true to life, uh, realistic portrayal of the society that we live in. So, you know, uh, with Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden and, you know, uh, Boris Johnson and, you know, all these people, uh, we are living in a world where we are increasingly aware of the problems of society in terms of asymmetry, you know, um, gaps and prejudices and, you know, so I, I think it's uh, uh, probably it's always the right time to read Animal Farm, but uh, probably 2020 is the optimum <laughs> time to read The Animal Farm, a wonderful work by George Orwell. Thank you, George Orwell. I really enjoyed it.